Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I am ravenous this morning, so even though it's not even 12, I have just boiled the kettle and I'm just about to make myself a mac and cheese. I had to run over to the coach house to get some milk because we didn't have any. It's a little bit of an overcast day today, so I'm just gonna get quite a lot of work done, hopefully in the next couple of hours, and then I'm going to go out and prepare my vegetable beds. I've been watching um, dig versus no dig, compost fertilizing videos all morning, getting myself hyped up, ready to do some gardening this afternoon. Um, and this morning, I've actually had a quite a productive morning. I filmed two reels, one of which um, is the sponsored by Terry Reel that you might have seen on Friday. I think I'm gonna publish it tomorrow because today's Thursday, so you guys might have seen it on Friday. And then I just, <laughs> on a whim, filmed and uploaded straight away a silly reel that was me, um, I did it to the Adele hello song, reintroducing myself to my favorite pieces in my wardrobe, um, ready for when lockdown lifts. So yeah, it's just a bit of a strange mood this morning. But anyway, time to crack on with my mac and cheese. Hopefully that'll give me a little bit of an energy boost. And then I'm hoping that I've also got some more seed trays and a grow light to hopefully sort out my leggy seedlings <laughs> arriving from Amazon a bit later. Um, and then I'm going to get pen to paper and do a little bit more garden planning. So because I was doing a little bit of filming this morning, I'm doing that typical thing where I've actually got like properly dressed on the top half, but not so much on the bottom half. I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm literally wearing cashmere leggings and my Doc Martens underneath. But then this jumper is quite cute, but it's also one of those jumpers that, that you're a little bit um, self-conscious of because it's got exposed areas so the design is really cute it's like this um knitted design i mean technically it's like a little tank top underneath which is cute but when i'm holding a camera for example you get exposed skin in areas where maybe you don't necessarily want exposed skin but i'm actually too cold to just wear this right now so as adorable as it is i'm going to quickly go and pop on um, Gosh, I keep seeing things out the corner of my eye. So the video that I published last night was the one um, where I did the greenhouse glow up and not last night, the night before. And everyone was commenting about that weird figure, that light in the window. Charlie was down the road at that time. So it's just a little bit spooky. Um, I'm in the house by myself at the moment. Obviously I, I have never felt scared in this house. I've never felt like you know, it's haunted or anything. But I mean, it is a very, very old house and things like that weird light. Someone commented saying that they thought they could see a ginger head person in the window. Oh, it is weird. Anyway, I need to go and get changed. <laughs> okay, this is more like it. This is my everyday uniform, literally just a fleece of some sorts um, and then some comfy trousers. Wow, I have become that person. <laughs> my goodness um and my gilet that keeps me nice and warm it's great for if i do have some gardening planned which i do this afternoon oh and then still a little bit of evidence that i was once a stylish person <laughs> with my nice earrings so yes this neutral casual <gasps> countryside look is today's outfit of the day
apologize for not being very chatty, but sometimes when I come into the greenhouse and I'm doing my seed planting, I just like to pop a YouTube video on in the background um, and really just get stuck in and stuck in and zone out. But let me show you what I have been busy doing. I've basically just planted all of these um, containers, all of which are recycled containers aside from these two, which are some of the biodegradable seed cells that I got a bit carried away <laughs> with and ordered from Amazon. Um, but here we have some Tory Birch box lids. We've got some of the containers here that my One Fine Dine meal came in, um, and then some egg cartons. I think egg cartons work really well, and obviously they're just the same pretty much same biodegradable as these cells that you can buy so you absolutely do not need to buy anything but um, yeah as I said I bought these when I'd run out of egg cartons for a while and I was just in desperate need of wanting to plant some more things so when I finished the video that you guys would have seen on Thursday you may ha you may have seen at the end I was basically organizing my seeds as per um, month by month and I set a batch aside that I was going to plant today because these are the ones that apparently will grow well in cool temperatures so these are all ones which can be grown outside or under glass in February or March. It is the 4th of March today. But obviously I'm very grateful for your help so if you recognize anything here that probably needs to go inside then feel free to let me know. But we have got some salad burn it in this one and I have pricked holes in the bottom of these. We've got uh, I think this is called Jack of the Hedge garlic. Uh, this was actually one of those grow bars. You often get them as gifts and you basically pour water onto it and it plumps up and then I pop some soil around it just because I wasn't, it didn't actually come with any instructions so I wasn't sure if you literally just leave it as it is. I mean this is solid, um, gosh, very crumbly soil but I thought I'd pop some soil around it and then I just <laughs> threw in some seeds that I had lying around that I hadn't properly planted so I've got some beans and peas that I just popped around the edges I need to pop some soil on top of those this one I think might be a little bit more demanding because there were quite a few instructions on this about like refrigerating the seeds it seems like quite a demanding little seed and it is sweet wood rough so I guess being in here is kind of similar to being in a refrigerator radish apparently is quite satisfying because it should grow quite quickly and you can keep on continually planting it every couple of weeks so that you get a really good harvest throughout the spring and summer Cosmos, um, I've got a good feeling about those because my Cosmos over here have started to shoot so hopefully they will spring to life Bear garlic, and by the way you can see this compost is not particularly high quality, it's not actually potting compost, it's multi-purpose and um, it does have some little random bits of rubbish in it which is not ideal but it's a fairly affordable compost Lemon cucumber, I think I need to bring this one inside because it did say um, plant or sow in March with heat. I didn't understand what that meant but I guess it means it needs a little bit of heat to germinate so I might pop it on the windowsill in the shed. Um, some lettuce which hopefully will start to spring up anytime soon and then we have got some red pear tomatoes. Now apparently is a time you can start sowing tomatoes so we shall see. Okay, I have prepared this little area here which hopefully is going to be good for my sweet peas. Apparently they like fairly long tubes, so my toilet rolls I think will be fantastic in the Tory Burch box. Um, but I noticed from my experiment inside the house that the sweet pea seeds which had been soaked performed um, or have so far been performing better, aka they're the only ones showing any signs of life yet. So I'm going to soak some sweet pea seeds overnight. And then I do have... That windowsill in there as I just said so I think I'm going to take the lemon cucumber in there um, just because it is going to go down to two degrees tonight and I think it might enjoy the warmth. What do you think Dickie? Gosh I always feel a little bit windswept after I have been out in the greenhouse and it started to get really chilly so I think I'm going to spend a couple of hours just um, doing a few emails. They've been fairly quiet today, but there's a few that I've just been putting off. So I'm gonna go and get cracking with that now. Um, but while I was, let me pop you up. My arm strength just cannot handle holding my 
camera at the moment. So while I was out there, I was listening to um, a few chat shows like Loose Women and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff about the Meghan and Harry Oprah interview, which I've just realized is going live on the day that this video goes live. So this video is going live on Sunday and the Oprah interview with Meghan and Harry is going live today as you're watching this in the US and at the point of filming it's not been confirmed when we are going to have it in the UK but I know it's going to be one of those things that if I don't watch it when it's just been released and I think they've now said it's going to be like 90 minutes or two hours it's going to be mega then it's going to be all over social media and I'm just going to have the biggest FOMO so without doubt this is where I will be using my Surfshark VPN. You guys know that I have been working with them for oh, nearly a year now um, and I just keep on finding new amazing use cases for it but the use that I'm going to be using it for um, on Sunday, the day that you're watching this, is I'm going to use my Surfshark VPN which is a virtual private network can be used to place your device anywhere in the world so I will scroll from one of the hundreds of countries on my Surfshark you literally just press the Surfshark icon on your tablet on your laptop whatever you're using it on and with Surfshark you can use it on unlimited devices which is amazing I'll scroll through all the countries I will pop myself in the US and then I'll be able to go to CBS which is where the interview is taking place that's where I don't know if that's where Oprah normally does her shows but that's where this one is going to get um get shown and I will sign up to I think it's CBS All Access but I'll leave a couple of notes in the description box which I'll do on Sunday to let you know exactly how to watch it if you are anywhere other than the US and you want to watch this um, interview on the day that it goes live but yeah I'll basically use my Surfshark to pop my laptop in the US go to CBS All Access and obviously my laptop will think that I'm in the US so there won't be a problem and then I will be able to watch the interview live which is amazing and I can join in all the chats online and then we can have a chat about it on Tuesday because it's just gonna be yeah I mean I don't know how I feel about it because obviously here in the UK um Philip is in hospital at the moment there's just so much press as usual negative press around Meghan Markle I saw someone this morning put on their Instagram like how is she getting so much bad press right now compared to the amount of bad press that Prince Andrew got and what he did versus what she's doing I don't even think she's doing anything that badly but yeah I'd love to know your thoughts on Meghan and Harry going on Oprah there is just there are just so many opinions about it online but anyway back to Surfshark so if you did want to download Surfshark as a VPN there are, I'm always talking about so many different use cases for it but whether you are in a different country and you want to watch um, you want to expand your Netflix horizons or you want to watch something which is available in one country but not in another country then it's just absolutely amazing so you can get three months extra three months extra for free and 83% off with my link and my code which will be on the screen and in the description box down below. It's literally so easy and it's a really secure way of browsing online, something that I've been using for months and months now and I keep finding amazing use cases for it so definitely recommend that. So I'm going to pop another few um, <laughs> chat shows on in the background now while I get a few emails done and I'll catch up with you later. So I've just quickly popped a fresh jumper on after doing a couple of hours of emails while watching TV. I was a little bit exhausted after all that pottering around the garden. Um, but I've just popped a different jumper on and some lipstick because I'm about to join a Zoom event with Waterpick which is Dicky, <laughs> which is the um, air flosser, air slash water flosser that I use and it's amazing if you've got braces because if you need to floss but you don't want to use like a string because you've got retainers it's amazing I'll show it to you later but the brand Waterpick are doing um, a zoom tonight and we're making some tacos together which sounds so much fun so I'm gonna get myself set up for that and 
join in the party. I've also just been arranging my delivery from Arena Flowers and I've just been making some edits to the newsletter that's going out tomorrow, adding in Arena Flowers into that because I think it'll be such a lovely Mother's Day um, gift idea or subscription. And they've also now given me my own discount code if you would like to, <laughs> sorry about the background noise, these two are having a whale of a time. Um, if you'd like to treat yourself or anyone else to an Arena Flowers subscription, it's Josie5 for five pounds off your first order. Um, I know I speak about them all the time, I absolutely love them and this week was this insane collection of tulips and this is actually only half of them. I've got the other half here, they're always so generous with the amount that they provide. Well, they have everywhere in Mexico, so it's dehydrated lime, cream, fruit, you name it. Um, if anybody's going to apply, you know, just get... aside from the cheese, um, tacos. So we have got super fresh corn tacos. Um, and then I think this is like a jackfruit and bean kind of vegan, um, what's it called, El Paseo? It smells absolutely delicious. Some pineapple, um, some onion and coriander mix, and then the salsa verde. I also had a tequila with the chili lime around the edges and it is absolutely scrumptious. That was a really fun little masterclass, so thank you water pick. This looks delicious and we are ready to tuck in. It is Saturday morning. Yesterday took a bit of a day off vlogging. Sometimes Fridays feel like a Saturday, especially if it's quiet um, on emails. And we did quite a few errands yesterday, got a little bit of gardening done, prepping the raised beds or half prepping them. It's a big job. So we're gonna carry on doing that this afternoon. So when did I last talk to you? Thursday night, we had the tacos, which were incredible. I definitely think I'm gonna order from Club Mexicana again, um, especially the, the vegan meat substitute. It was just absolutely scrumptious. And we've got quite a few tacos, the actual corn tacos left. And they were saying that you can cook them and then cut them up and have them as like little nacho chips. So that might be a nice little afternoon snack. Charlie is currently preparing our weekend brunch. And I thought that I would just run through a few favorite beauty things because it's been a little while. I know in my last vlog or the one before, I was working with By Terry on that vlog, which is always a dream to work, work with brands that I absolutely love and use. And if it's a product that I was gonna tell you about anyway, and then I have the opportunity to do so in even more depth when a brand wants to work together, it is a dream come true. And I thought I would expand on that um, just by chatting through a few. Other favourites, the product that I was talking about in that video was the By Terry Hyaluronic Global Face Cream, which is this. Um, this has become my everyday moisturiser. It's just so, so hydrating. I know I spoke about it so, so much in that video, so I'm not going to go into loads of detail, but it's basically got three different sizes of hyaluronic acid particles in here. So it just works so deep in the skin at hydrating, which is obviously really number one thing for anti-aging is keeping the skin hydrated so your any little fine lines even those tiny 
like ridges that you sometimes get in the skin, especially if you've been outside a lot, um, that can just make the skin texture look a little bit more uneven. This just really helps with those. So this is just the dreamiest moisturizer that I am loving using. I do have my Buy Terry discount code, uh, which is Josie20 for 20% off until the 21st of March. I'd recommend picking up this um, as well as the under eye concealer because this is basically skincare slash concealer. So this is also like a hydrating serum, but also gives you the coverage under your eyes. And then I love my By Terry blushes. Amber Light is my everyday blush. I definitely recommend picking up one of those with a 20% off. It's just the loveliest kind of, oh, just realized. There we go, that's a little bit better lighting wise, isn't it? I didn't realize I'd flicked my switch all the way up. Um, yeah, just a really lovely kind of natural, I haven't actually got that much on today, blush shade. And these last for so long. I think I've had, my first one lasted me well over a year, so it's a really good investment. Obviously the By Terry Hydra Powder, best powder in the world. Doesn't leave you completely mattified, still allows the skin to glow and hydrates the skin while you're wearing it. Gives you just almost like an airbrush filter finish. I'd pick up one of those. And of course, the Balm de Rose lip balm. I feel like you just cannot go wrong with that. So that's my By Terry obsession. Sticking with kind of anti-aging slash hyaluronic. Two products, I say from Elizabeth Arden. These are from Elizabeth Arden. This is Provage, which is a brand owned by Elizabeth Arden, but it's their slightly more um, kind of premium, kind of aimed towards those that are really focusing on anti-aging within their skincare. So the hyaluronic acid capsules, ceramide capsules, I pop these on in the morning before my moisturizer and they, again, just so, so hydrating, plumping the skin with moisture. This with the By Terry moisturizer is just the absolute dream combination. And then to completely be the icing on the cake for this anti-aging, hydrating, antioxidant trio this is this i've been using since just before christmas i had a little sample pot of this um, and now i have the proper bottle so i can finally actually show you this this is the privage anti-aging daily serum 2.0 so the best way this is that i could get really scientific with this product it has so many insane ingredients that just work so well for anti-aging but in a nutshell one of the main ingredients if not the most kind of iconic ingredient in this is called edibanone and it's basically this orange <laughs> ingredient if you've ever seen anyone or on like tv programs where they do surgeries and they're having to like move organs around like say you need a heart transplant or something this does have a connection, I promise. The organs are transported in this like orange liquid and that liquid is edibanone and it's just super protective and super reparative for the skin and everything inside. So this has harnessed that insane power of edibanone and edibanone in terms of skincare is the most incredible antioxidant. And what an antioxidant does for the skin is it basically helps the skin to protect itself from environmental aggressors. So if you live in the city, that's pollution, smoke, even stress can damage the skin and antioxidants can help the skin to kind of fight off the results of these environmental aggressors. And because otherwise, if you don't help your skin to protect you from them, it's just gonna increase or accelerate aging. So it's well known that we need antioxidants in our skincare and one of the most powerful that most people talk about is vitamin C. But edibanone is so much more powerful than vitamin C. So when I have got cleansed skin in the mornings, this is the first thing that goes on my skin. So I get that instant hit of antioxidant goodness and my skin is able to fight away those environmental aggressors, which yeah, we have them even here in the countryside, whether it's like pharma pollutants, there is still pollution out here in the countryside. So I guess it's just majorly supporting the skin's kind of natural repair, repair process, um, which can help you have more youthful looking skin, which is amazing. So this is just an absolute powerhouse of a product, a very important part of my skincare routine. And then in the evenings, more of like a renewal process. So again, 
it's all about getting that glowing and youthful complexion. I am turning 30 this year, so I am looking at kind of anti-aging ingredients. This is the Midnight Renewal from Amoravixa. I was using the matching night cream, but we have finished that now. And this is a very powerful product for helping the skin to renew itself while you sleep and your skin is very very active at night so something like this can help to get rid of any dead skin cells um, help the skin to basically turn over and enable you to always have that lovely glowing complexion no dull surface layers it's a really enjoyable product to use just one pump it feels really lovely upon application and i just find that i wake up glowing with this I pair this with either my Bare Minerals night cream, my Elemis night cream, um, the Amora Vixen one, amazing. I tend to get through night creams quicker than anything else. Yeah, another fantastic one. Obviously with all this um, reparative work we're doing on the skin, SPF is really important. I like to spray my skin with Kate Somerville uncomplicated SPF factor 50. So this is just really easy to like mist on after I've done my makeup. And that way I don't feel the need to incorporate SPF earlier in my skincare routine, which I think can sometimes mess with the order of the products. And then I always have some favorites from Bare Minerals. So I'll whiz you through my Bare Minerals favorites. This is the Liquid Mineral Concealer. I think it's kind of an update to their Bare Skin Serum Concealer, kind of. So as with all Bare Minerals products, lovely cleaning ingredients, nothing that's going to do any harm to your skin. After you've done all of that incredible skincare, you definitely don't want to put any products on your skin, which are then just going to clog it up and put nasty ingredients on your skin. So I'm very conscious that I want my makeup products to be clean and you can just rest assured with bare minerals that they are. So this is the original liquid mineral concealer, newly formulated. To be honest, I find this as good as like a foundation. So on those days where I'm not wearing as much makeup, I just pop this sparingly on my face as a concealer and then just blend it out with a beauty blender. And I'm just obsessed with their strength and length collection. So the mascara and the brow gel, both of which have ingredients which really nourish the hairs on your brows and on your lashes, help them grow, help to nourish them. Um, so that is the mascara and brow gel that I'm loving. And then my everyday lipstick is the Mineralist Hydra Smoothing Lipstick in the shade Insight. So this, if you're ever wondering what's on my lips, it's nearly always this. Sometimes I pop it on with a lip liner as well. Um, it's just, for me, the perfect pinky shade without being too OTT, still quite natural. And consistency-wise, it feels balmy, but you still get that lovely colour payoff. So that is a dream. This has turned into a little bit of a beauty favourite. So the last product that I want to really give a huge shout out to is this. Now this is from Purology. So again, it's a vegan brand, cruelty free. This is called their Hydrate Soft Softening Treatment. Now, I hadn't used a conditioning mask for a little while just because I ran out of one in the shower. So I had maybe three weeks where I wasn't using a mask regularly. So my hair was in a point where I really needed it. Also, of course, given the fact that I've not had a haircut in goodness knows so long, how long, but I used this the last time I washed my hair and oh my goodness, I actually don't think I've felt my hair this soft aside from salon treatments before. It feels light, it feels clean, it doesn't feel heavy and it just, I mean, for blonde hair to look shiny, is quite rare but i am just so chuffed with how my hair looks how it feels and another thing sometimes if you deep condition your hair and it's really light and feathery it doesn't hold a curl but i used just very very quickly i wasn't even doing like a proper hairstyle i used my dyson air wrap to create a little bit of shape around my face just so i could basically do my reels when did i even do them on thursday I did my reels on thursday um so i just quickly not even on wet hair, on dry hair, whizzed my Dyson through the ends of my hair just to give it a little bit of shape, thinking, oh, it'll do for the reels and then it'll drop out, especially given how silky and freshly washed my hair was. I still have, can you see that little flick? I still have that 
beautiful blow dry curl to my hair four days later. I washed my hair on Wednesday, it's Saturday now, added those little curl, okay, three days later, added those very soft curls slash movement on Thursday morning, and I've been out and about, I have been in the drizzle, I've been in the wind, I've been outside gardening, and I still have that little bit of movement to my hair. And if I hadn't been wearing it in a ponytail the last few days, I'd still have that beautiful shape around my face. So very, very impressed. Random one, I'm always intrigued by um, more natural deodorants. And this is from a company called Native. I've been using this one, um, I've got this in my Pira box and it's really, really good. This is a citrus and herbal musk flavor, paraben free, aluminium free, and it's really creamy. I feel like it really nourishes my underarms. So a little shout out to that one. And I've been talking for 12 minutes, so um, yes, I hope you enjoyed that little update as to the beauty products that I'm loving at the moment. And now, I'm pretty sure my brunch is ready. Never push things. If we push things, then we tend to break them. Okay, so after a lovely brunch, we are in the greenhouse. I have prepared some biodegradable pots and this is what I'm going to be growing. Now, all of these apparently don't mind um, cold temperatures. If we get any more frosts like we did last night, then I will pop them in the um, shed next door. So we have got some spring onions, some cauliflower, some beetroot and some celeriac. Now I think the celeriac needs a little bit of vermiculite and I have got some perlite down there which basically um, helps to keep the moisture in. I've not grown any of these before so this is a real experiment so let's see how they get along. I'm very resourceful when I'm gardening. <laughs> I've got this old, oops, oh my gosh, I've got this old um, bath bomb pot and the lid is especially good for holding my seeds while I'm doing my planting. Oh my goodness me, they are tiny. These are the most ridiculously small seeds I've ever seen. In fact, I think I'm gonna just sow them straight into the compost because they're far too small for me to attempt to pick up. vegetable beds and we have a dicky doing some fertilizing are we young man right puppies are not allowed on the vegetable beds get off one of the places that Charlie and I popped into yesterday was the um, one of our local garden centres and it just happens to be the rose centre for the Cotswolds. So we picked up two new roses which we have planted in our new um, containers in front of the door. So we used to have these kind of grey, slightly rotten wooden containers and so we have replaced them with these nice new, new and in inverted commas, wooden ones. And we have got two rambling climbing roses, obviously very fresh, very new, they've got a lot of growing to do. But hopefully within a few months, these are the ones that we got, perennial blush climber roses, really beautiful small clusters, little white and pink roses. <laughs> You're right there, Dexy comes with some instructions we didn't actually stand the container in water so I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra watering now to hopefully make up for it and hopefully before too long 
I mean, to be honest, it probably won't be this year, but it'd be so lovely when the archway over our door is covered in these beautiful little clusters of pretty roses. pulling the ivy off the back wall because it is destroying the brickwork out there as you probably will have just seen and I just came in to make a cup of tea and the postman has delivered this lovely selection of little biscuits which are from Baked by Staff. They've come from River Island. Happy International Women's Day. Love River Island. This is just the absolute perfect treat to enjoy with my cup of tea so thank you very much River Island. Mm. And now we're going to take these to the greenhouse and do a little bit more pea and broad bean planting. beans are in the toilet roll tubes in the Tory Burge box and hopefully they will make it through the night. I'm going to pop some frost um, insulation over the top of all of the things that are in here and the insulation is this selection of um, you know those insulated bags that you get in those meal kits? So things that come with like your Hello Fresh, your All Plants, they're just great for collecting and using as insulation over your little plants in the greenhouse. At least I hope they are. You can see in here from this side a few of my sweet peas and beans starting to grow. And then lots of the gardening YouTubers talk about growing peas in a drain pipe. And then when they're ready you can just slide them straight into your bed. So I'm giving that method a go as well. We have this drain pipe just down the edge of the greenhouse. And then my last chore before I go and help Charlie clear out the ivy is to sprinkle the coffee grounds on this middle bed. So I'll just need to remember that this is the bed with the coffee grounds. They act as a bit of a nitrogen supplement and hopefully it will do a bit of good to anything that I end up planting in here. As you can see, we've been busy digging them up, raking, adding a little bit more fertile compost on top. So hopefully they'll uh, mulch down a little bit and be perfect for starting to grow in the next couple of weeks. This area just looks a million times better now. We have spent most of the day pulling off the ivy. Luckily it came off quite easily because Charlie had cut the roots a couple of um, days ago or last weekend. We have got the roses which used to be in the old pots planted down here. Hopefully they will grow up and then a couple more climbing roses and clematis. So hopefully because this is our bedroom window we will soon have a beautiful rose-covered wall 
looking rather spectacular to look out on. You can see why we needed to remove the ivy because ivy is incredibly disruptive. You can see here where one of the veins was actually digging its way into the wall and just crumbling the brickwork. So hopefully we'll have managed to preserve this lovely old red brick wall for a couple of years longer by getting rid of the ivy. All right, you two, mummy's getting cold. Should we go back inside? Come on then, come on then. So for dinner this evening, we have got another of the epic Musette by Tom Aiken's um, meals. Another beef wellington, and this is a spinach and butternut squash side. It is it smelling lovely, delicious. It? I think there's some like red wine vinegar or something in there. Gorgeous. And then because we burnt so many calories out in the garden, we, we are being can. serious little snuffle trops. And Charlie's also done some chips and some mac and cheese. But this is, um, I think I vlogged it when we had it before, but it was just just so incredible like beef wellington unreal is beef wellington such a well. treat isn't it yeah it's, it's the ultimate luxurious dish yeah I, I actually had a few people that were us based on hungry man about town asking about beef wellington so obviously it's a very british thing a bit like a meatloaf or something being very american right but yeah i mean it's uh, sorry it, so yeah. is it british beef wellington is like a, is a british dish oh okay i don't know where it comes from maybe it's something to do with the duke of wellington probably um but yeah, it's a, it's a British thing, but obviously it's it's something that is recognised around the world. Mm. But I don't know if in the US it's as well known. It's basically a fillet of beef and then normally it's like a mushroom pate um, and then pastry, yeah. right? Yeah, the pate can vary. Like this is a mushroom, but it's normally mushroom and pate. So like a, like a, a liver pate or a duck a duck pate mm -hmm. around. But I've seen some recipes where they wrap the beef in like a parma ham almost. Yes, yeah, I've um, seen that as well. Yeah, so, and then obviously we had a, a vegetable wellington the other day. So yeah. The, the wellington just refers to the whole sort of structure of it, I guess. Someone is feeling ultra needy. And here we go, beef wellington, a butternut squash salad type side. Ooh, yes. What yes, flavour is the mac and cheese? <clears throat> it's got a truffle mac and cheese in it. Oh. And this is a dreamy meal, and then these are home cooked chips. Yeah, these are just with olive oil. I'd of, I'd often do them with duck fat, but we'll be having that with. Um, oh my goodness! I'll give you one of these. This is I'll the best. Little... Little... Yeah, I knew you yeah. would. The small one. bits are the best. Yeah. And that is an epic Saturday night dinner. Boom! Oh my goodness! Boom! 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 I think we should sit up actually. Where's Daddy meant to sit? Where's Daddy meant to sit? Daddy, it's really nice and cosy where I'm sitting. As soon as the camera comes out, Dexter comes. <clears throat> Dexter is literally a, what's the word? When you, what's the word for you, Dexie? Narcissist. No, no, <laughs> no, what's the word for like photo bomber, a vlog bomber? You are a vlog bomber. You're just here for the likes, aren't you, Dexie? To be honest, Daddy, if it doesn't involve promoting my Instagram, which is at Dexter and Dickens, I'm not bothered. Oh. This is literally my dream Saturday night with my three pals. Do you know the only thing that would make tonight better? A little wire head here. No. Yeah. 